Hey everybody, doing something a little new today. I'm helping Ron out with some headphone reviews. And oh, wearing a Team USA jersey today because I've been watching World Cup games since they started and I've loved it. I've been watching almost every game. And I know the US did pretty well, but uh, about as well as I expected. I'm still enjoying watching the games and can't wait to see how they turn out. So. For everybody out there like me watching the games, hope you guys are having as much fun with it as I am. All right, Ron asked me to be part of this headphone evaluation, and this is all new to me um, in a lot of ways. When it comes to speakers, I have really solid references in my head. I've listened to certain music and you know probably thousands of different tracks that I've really learned and I know how they sound on different systems, on different speakers, and I know how they sound at the highest level reproduced. I know when I listen to song XYZ that it's going to have certain things within the sound stage and where they're going to be and how far away they are from other things in the sound stage and the tonality of everything and the detail levels. And I have such solid references in my head that I can go and listen to a completely different system and I can say, well, I hear the cabinet resonating at around 200 hertz. I can hear a, a missing lack of some resolution or some detail. And I can just go through and say, here's, here's the things that I'm noticing right away because I have such a bar set as a reference that I know what all that stuff is supposed to sound like. So for me to go to headphones, this is completely new. I'm not a headphone guy. So I didn't really have a reference. I couldn't just pick up one set of headphones and say, this is how this really sounds. So for me, it was really important to go through all of these headphones and, and then convey how do they compare. It was easy for me to say how they compare versus how do they sound and just do some kind of review on one headphone. I'm not a really a reviewer. But the format that we worked this through was a lot of fun. And it was real easy for me to tell you exactly how these sound in comparison to one another. So I'm going to go through these with you guys and give you this feedback. Ron's going to do the editing. I didn't know really what any of these were. I mean, I knew I knew what these were. I knew that kind of where they come from. I knew a little bit about this company. But as far as all the rest of these companies, I really didn't know anything about any of them. So it's all fresh for me. I have no idea what the price points of all of these are. And we set these things up, hooked up to my system, and we started with this solid state amp, which was a pretty nice amp that came with these headphones, from what I understand. So same brand of these. And when I talk about these, I listed them as one, two, three, four, and five. Ron will have to pop up what the actual name of this thing is and maybe throw it up on the screen so that you guys know exactly what it is that I'm talking about. So. We did this the other day and we did kind of first impressions where I listened to this stuff and I was the camera was on me the whole time. And it, it was different in that I could give some immediate impressions on what I thought, but it was also a little awkward because we had the system set up over here and the camera was over there and it was kind of back and forth and I had to turn around to turn the volumes up and down and it, it just didn't film well. So I felt like this would be better. I went through these again and I wrote down impressions and listened to some different tracks. And I got a little second go around. I got a little deeper impression of the differences in these things. And then I went to this little 300B amp that I have in stock that has a headphone outlet on it. So we got to listen to the, the 300B tube amp through the Dot Audio preamp, which again sounded different than the solid state amp. And it was a different impression of the whole thing. But I wanted to just kind of give you guys some first impressions on this stuff and kind of let you know how much fun it was. So when I went through these again yesterday, same with this, this solid state amp, um, I numbered these things one through five and this model, this pair of speakers or this pair of headphones here was my number one listed. And I, I really like these things, the comfort and the fit. It, it was kind of big all around the head, not just around the ear. And the last track that I played, uh, when I, or the first track that I played when I started taking notes, was a track from Niles Lofgren, which is one that's been wore out at the shows quite a bit. It's called Keith Don't Go. And it's a very aggressive track. It's got 
you know, it's it's brightly recorded, it's a live recording, and it's tough to reproduce. There's a lot of systems that I listen to that track on and I hate it. I walk right out of the room because it's just too in your face, too aggressive, too bright. So that was an interesting one to play back. These, uh, the whole group, these were my favorites on that. It had the best overall sound. It was really open, really airy, uh, really balanced, and had really good body to it. And the vocals were super smooth. Um, this reminded me a lot of listening to some of my own speakers. Um, second was this pair, which is also planar magnetic style, and it goes way over the head too. And these two were more similar than the rest of these. These two, in a way, were really standouts. These were really open sounding, really airy. Um, there was a little more sharpness. Um, it lacked a little more body compared to these. Is this, these played down a little lower, uh, whereas these didn't quite play as low. So it lacked a little body, but it was a little give and take. Overall though, both of these were really good. Um, when it came to the dynamic headphones, uh, this one was listed as number three. The thing I didn't like about these was it would do this. It would, I would pick them up and it would get a little twisted. Um, the adjustments uh, had to be moved around for each of us and it's easy to adjust these. Uh, it's, all of them seem like we're pretty easy to adjust. These were different in the way you made the adjustments and you had to unscrew something and actually physically remove it and then screw it back so it took a little longer but once you locked it in it, it never moved versus some of these others um, the adjustments could move around a little bit. Um, these went right over the ear, but the cushion was really good. It was, it felt really comfortable on my head. Now on the Keith Don't Go, the dynamics on these were really good. Uh, a little sharp, but it had really good balance, had good detail. Uh, voices, slightly veiled compared to these two, uh, but not bad. Uh, going to the fourth one, it was a pair of headphones that Hobbs brought over. These are his personal headphones. And there's some Sennheisers. And I think these are a pretty popular model. Also really comfortable. They fit more over the ear. Um, these are a really smooth sounding headphone. They, they had less detail than some of the others. Had a good balance. Uh, the overall sound though, listening to Keith Don't Go, was a little bit dull uh, to me compared to these. And then these also, I love the cup on these things. They just fit so comfortably, um, extremely comfortable to wear. And these had really good dynamics. I mean, these were like a, like a, a sharp, you know, more immediate sound. It was slightly aggressive, uh, not as good long-term as the rest of these. These were more like some of the uh, older Grado headphones is kind of what they reminded me of. So really sharp de uh, detail. Uh, lacking uh, the air, and um, but they sounded really balanced. So overall, they were all really good. Um, but a couple started to become more standouts. When I listened to Jack Johnson's Subplots, a really good track that, that we used, I, I then did it in reverse order. I started with these. And it really wanted me to take the volume and just keep turning the volume down. It was just slightly edgy. And it sounded as if the sound was on my head. It was, you could tell I'm wearing headphones, the sound is here. Um, with, with the Sennheisers, the guitars really kind of lacked detail. Uh, vocals were a little muffled and it missed air and detail. They were very subdued sounding. Uh, with this model here, here I go trying to pick these up again and it moves around. Um, the guitar work sounded really nice in the Jack Johnson. Uh, the vocals were very pushed back, which I kind of like the pushed back vocals. The vocals sounded good, but the vocals were still slightly a little more muffled, uh, but it was better than these two. Uh, moving up to the planar magnetics, the guitar work on these things, oh my goodness, it sounded good. It, I wrote, uh, wow, airy. Uh, the guitar, the bottom of the guitar lacked a little more body but the texture of it was extremely good and it sounds big. Um, the sound is out here and not here. Uh, so great texture on everything and the cymbals were very delicate. You could just really catch the shimmer of the sound of those cymbals. Uh, with these, it was very close to these. A lot of times the comparisons to these were very close. 
Um, the had, these had great vocals, and the bass was a little deeper. Each time we played something, or I played something, where there was some really good bass tracks, these seemed like they had a little more bass and a little more body than these. It was just a little different balance. Uh, there was a song that I played that it, the song is called Heart. I forget what the artist is. It's this huge long name. Uh, but I, then again, I started with these and I wrote wow on there. It was really clear when it was a really good recording. And there were there's things in the recording that are very spacious and very, you know, when I play it on, on speakers, there's things that are really out there in the sound stage and it's really layered. And I was really picking that up with these headphones. It was like, again, the sound was, it was from out here. It was not on the, on my head. Bass was really deep. This has a fundamental, that particular track, that's about 25 hertz note. And these crushed it. It really sounded good and clear. And I wrote on there, I can really hear the quality of the recording. It was just really stood out on these. And then with these, I wrote, wow, also. <laughs> Bass had good texture. It didn't go quite as deep as these, but man, did the bass have really good texture. Um, slightly sharper sounding than this pair. Um, and a little tilted to the top end. So it's just a little bit of a tonal difference between the two. And it, it may depend on what kind of music you're listening to as to which you liked best, but these were really st real standouts. Um, these then on that, on that track, a little more aggressive and the, and the bass, um, was better than these two, uh, but not, not as deep as, as good as what these two were. Uh, the bass lost a little texture compared to the planar magnetics and a little sharper sounding. Um, the Sennheisers was just missing air and detail. It, it smeared a lot of the top end. I, I just wasn't really that enthused with those on that track at all. Um, these actually sounded, um, these were the sharpest and the most aggressive, and they were really lacking the air and the detail that was in that track. Then lastly, I put on a Vienna Tang song, and it's just her and the piano, and it's a beautifully recorded song. And listening to these, I wrote, uh, okay, but blah. It's like, it really didn't do anything for me. It was, it was pretty, but eh. And I wrote the same with these, also blah, but better than, but better than number five. I didn't like, I didn't like the entertain through these. Um, with these again, it beat both of those as far as the dynamic headphones go. These were nice. It had really good vocals, but it lacked a little bit of the air uh, and space around those things. With both of these, I wrote, I wrote the same things. I wrote wow and goosebumps. These were incredible when I did Vienna Tang on both of these. Just, oh man, just unbelievable how beautiful her vocal came through as if she were there. It was like listening to my In Extremes and she was deep in the sound stage and you could just reach out and touch her breath from where she was. You get that sense with these headphones. You got a real realism of her really being there. It's just, I couldn't believe it was that good on a pair of headphones. Those, I never really heard any headphones sound to that level before so i was really floored by by just how good those sounded and then i went to this big 300 b tube amp and ran it through my dodd preamp and so i was using the remote over here as turning stuff up and down because there's there's difference in sensitivity levels of these uh, most of the dynamic headphones are much louder these were much louder so were these and the planar magnetics required a little more power but what I noticed when I went to this amplifier, um, when I listened to these, I don't know if it's an impedance mismatch or something that these, this amp doesn't work well with these when, when you had to bring the volume up quite a bit to get to where you needed it to be. Uh, these started to crap out on you a little bit. There was either some distortion because of the mismatch and impedance. I don't know if it was the amp giving out or just something there as far as the way it matches with these things. I don't think this was distorting so much. It just didn't like this amplifier. And if you brought it up to about a medium power level to where you're, you know, you're starting to get into ranges where you're happy with the levels, they just gave out. And it was the same with these. Uh, these really didn't like it that well either, but it liked that amp better than what these did. Um, 
at higher volume levels, these started giving out. Or you could hear the distortion that was there, and it was just a bad match. Whereas neither of these had any problem with the, with the tube amp, and these had no issue with the tube amp at all. Um, but it was the same impressions overall. It was just different. With the tube amp, these sounded really good, really good, better than the amp that it came with until you reached a level to where it broke up, you know, to where you reached a distortion. There was a limit to how loud you could play it, but they sounded really good. Vocals were great. And I went through a whole group of songs with all of these with this amp. I didn't take notes on every one because it, it became kind of a lot of the same, you know, and even at lower volumes, these sounded fantastic on it, but you just couldn't bring the volume levels up much at all. The real winner on, on the big tube amp here was were these 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 loved that amp and it was very lush and definitely Vienna Tang was Goosebump City. I mean, it just drew you into the music. When you played, we played some dynamic stuff from, um, or I played some dynamic stuff from Toto, um, and I think it may have sounded a little more dynamic and a little more controlled in the bass with the solid state amp versus with the tube amp, some of the big drum hits, you know, stuff like that were a little faster and more controlled, whereas it was a little softer, a little more bloated maybe with the tube amp, but everything else with the tube amp was really good. I mean, lush and beautiful sound. And so all in all, I'm really impressed with these two more than any. Uh, I found them very close. These were a little thinner, a little more tilted to the top end. These seemed a little more balanced and had definitely a little better bottom end. It was a little more texture and it played a little bit deeper. But depending on what song you're listening to, you may go either way. You may want one that's not as bass heavy with some tracks and then with some tracks you do. You could kind of go either way, but sometimes I thought these had a little more airiness, but not much. Overall, these two were home runs. These, this pair here was, I can't pick those up that way. They'll do this. Um, that, I, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that got old with these. Um, but overall, these things sounded really good. They just, they just didn't outperform these planar magnetic models. If I had never heard these, I would think these were fantastic. But like I said, I really didn't have a benchmark in my head of being able to just put something on and say, oh, it's this or it's that, or it doesn't have this or, because I really didn't have that with headphones. I'm not a headphone guy. So it was really good for me to do all of these together and make comparisons. And I think I learn more uh, when I do comparisons, even with speakers, I'm constantly comparing capacitors and connectors or different things that I'm listening to. And I'm, and I'm going back and forth to figure out which is best. And that's sometimes how our products get better is making comparisons like that and it it carried over really well into these headphones and had a lot of fun with it we've got more to do um, i may be shot another time to give feedback with them on a different amp which is great i look forward to that and i hope you guys get a little bit out of this and i can't wait to see how this all edits out and ron pieces all this stuff together i think it was a lot of fun and i hope you guys liked the video we'll see you in some more I've got some I got to shoot too. See you guys later.